Okay, in this video, we're going to look at measures of variability. Okay, when statisticians are looking at data, they like to know two things. First, they like to know what is the central tendency of the data. So that means things like the mean, the median, and the mode. Okay, central tendency, where is the center of the data? Where's, where's its heart? But that only tells us one thing about the data. What we also want to know is what is the shape of the data or what is its variability? How, do, how is it spread out? To understand this idea of variability or the shape of the data, let's look at three examples. Here's three different sets of data showing the heights of different groups of people. Okay, in the first set of data, we can see that the data has a nice kind of hill shape. This is actually called a normal distribution. And you can see the mean in the center there. And there's a kind of a nice even spread. We've got some lows, we've got a big chunk in the middle, some high. And so with the mean in the middle, there's an even spread of the data around the middle, we might say. But this data here, it has the same mean, the data in the middle has the same mean, but see how differently it's spread out. Instead of having a nice hill shape, there's lots more data down the lower end, and as, just as much in the middle, and also lots of data at the high end as well. So it's a different kind of shape or a different kind of spread. And finally, in this group here, it's different again. We've got the same uh, frequency in the middle, the same mean as well, but this time there's no there's no lower values down here and no higher values up here. So the shape or the spread or the variability of this data is very different. Okay. In this uh, lesson, we'll learn how to describe each of these three different uh, shapes or three different types of variability using a couple of different methods. So here are the four different measures of variability that we're going to look at. We'll look at each one in turn. So we've got the range, the interquartile range, the standard deviation, and the variance. Let's start by looking at the range. Finding the range is pretty simple. It's just this. That's all. You just take the maximum value in the data and you minus or subtract the minimum value in the data from that. And what's left over will be the range. Here's an example. So here's a set of data. We've got all these numbers from 12 all the way up to 176. So the maximum value in this data is 176. That's the biggest value. The minimum value is the 12 there. So we do 176 minus 12, and that comes to 164. So, so this number, 164, tells us the gap, the size of the gap between the minimum value and the maximum value for a given set of data. Okay, the, the range that it covers. Okay, the next measure of variability is the interquartile range. This one's also pretty simple. It's just Q3 minus Q1. Now, what are these Q values? Let's explain. Imagine this box represents a set of data. Well, if I find the median of the data, then I'll have split the data into two halves, a lower half and an upper half, separated by the median. Then if I take each of those halves and finding the median in that half, cut it in half again, I'll have broken the data into four quarters. Okay, it turns out that this value here, this lower median, the median of the lower half, is Q1. This uh, median of the upper half is Q3, while the original median in the middle is Q2. And once we've found this value, Q3 minus Q1, we'll have found the range of this middle section here, these, the middle two quarters of the data. And this is often, the two, these are often the two most important quarters of the data where most of the uh, scores or most of where the data lies. So it's important to know the range of that middle, those middle two quarters. Let's look at an example. We'll just shift that and I'll wave my magic wand to make some data appear. Now the first thing to look at for this data is to find out the number of the scores there. When we count them up, we find that n equals 12. There are 12 scores. And of course, 
quite fortunately they're in order which is important if I'm going to find the median I have to have my data in order now to find the median I use this equation we're going to be looking for the n plus 1 over 2 score in the list and if we put 12 into the equation then it turns out we're looking for the 6.5 score in the list so let's count along 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 0.5 puts us in between 104 and 101. Well, I don't actually need to work out what the median is. All I need to know is that the median is in between there, so that's where the split in the data is. That's where Q2 will be. I don't actually need to know what Q2 is. Now that I've divided the data into two halves, I need to find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. That's going to be Q1. And Q3. Let's find those medians. Okay, I don't really need to use this equation this time because we're dealing with such small amounts of numbers. There's six numbers below the median, so clearly the median is going to be, for the lower half, the median will be in here. Three numbers on this side, three numbers on that side, so that's where Q1 is. Okay, it's in between these two numbers. So I'm going to have to average these out in order to find Q1. Okay, the average of these two numbers will add them together, divide by 2, and we get 61. So Q1 is 61. Next, we find the median of the upper half. And again, it's very easy. I don't need to use any equations. There's six numbers. So in the middle is going to be right here. That's where the median is in between this number and this number. There's three numbers either side. So I'm going to need to average these two numbers to find the median. When I average those two numbers out, I find that it equals 140. So Q3 equals 140. Now all that's left to do is take our two values, Q3 and Q1, put them into this equation. Q3 minus Q1 equals 140 minus 61, and that equals that equals 79. So the interquartile range, or IQR for short, is 79 for this data. So to bring that back to our little diagram up here, the interquartile range is this distance between Q3 and Q1. This is the key part of the data. So in this case, we found that this range here, this interquartile range, is 79. Okay, next we look at the standard deviation. What is the standard deviation? Well, it's a measure of how dispersed the data is from the mean. So, in other words, how spread out from the mean is the data. If the standard deviation has a low value, this would indicate the data is clustered close to the mean. So the data is not very spread out. Here's a graph of some data that might have a low standard deviation. So you can see it's fairly tightly clustered together around the central mean, which would be around here. If the standard deviation has a high value, then that's going to indicate that the data is spread out away from the mean, that it's more dispersed. Here's what that might look like. Okay, this data here is a bit more spread out than the data over in the first graph. So it's more dispersed, it's going to have a higher standard deviation. The data is more spread out from this mean. Okay, how do we find the standard deviation? Well, there's an equation, which looks a little bit scary. Okay, here's the equation. It looks complicated, but it's actually not that not that difficult once you know how to do it. Let's go through the steps. There's six steps involved in executing this equation and finding the standard deviation. I'll write them down. So these six steps simply take you through what's going on in this equation. First, find the mean, and then minus each piece of data. Take each piece of data, minus the mean from that, square that value, and then add that together because you're doing that for every value, uh, every every score, every value of x in the data. Add all those values together, divide by the number of scores minus 1, and then uh, take the square root of the whole thing. You'll have the standard deviation. Let's try, let's try and do it to some data, and then we'll probably see better how it works. Okay, here's some data, some nice, not too big numbers. It's going to make our life a little bit easier. Let's find the standard deviation. Okay, to do that, we're going to need to set up a table to help us find all these values. Let's create that table. Okay, so you can see that this table, it's got all the scores in the first column. All the x values are all the scores. In the next column, we've got the score minus the mean, okay, which is one of the steps over here that we're going to have to do. 
And in this column, we've got the score minus the mean squared. Okay, so first we need to find out what is this mean, this x bar for this uh, set of data. Okay, now you should know that x bar, the mean, is found by taking the sum of all the x values and then dividing by the number of scores. So when we add up all the scores, all the data points, we get 156. There's nine, uh, there's eight scores there. So n is eight. 156 divided by eight equals 19.5. So we've done step one, we've found the mean. Step two says, find the difference between each score, piece of data, and the mean. So that's what this column here in the table is for. We're going to take each score and then minus the mean from it. For the first one, the score is 11 minus the mean, which is 19.5, and we get negative 8.5. For the second score, we do the same. We take the score 14, and we minus the mean, which is 19.5, and we get negative 5.5. Okay, so you can see what we're doing. We'll just put the rest of the number. Okay, there's the rest of the values for all the, all the equations x minus the mean. In the next column, we've got to square these results from the previous column. So negative 8.5, we're going to square it. When we square negative 8.5, we get 72.25. And then we're going to do the same for each of these values. Okay, so we've squared all of those values and we've got these results. Now we've done step three. We've squared all the differences. Now step four says add all the squared differences together. When we add all these numbers together, all these squared differences, we find they add up to 242. So we've now done step four. We've added all the squared differences together to get 242. Now step five. We've got to divide the sum. So that 242, we've got to divide that sum by the number of scores minus 1. Here it is, 242, the number of the sum, and divided by the number of scores minus 1. The number of scores is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So n is 8, minus 1 gives 7. 242 divided by 7 equals 34.57. Now we're up to the last step. Take the square root of the result. So we take the square root. Square root of 34.57 equals 5.88. So that's it. We've found the standard deviation is 5.88. The last measure of variability is the variance. It's very easy. Once you've found the standard deviation, you just take the standard deviation and square it. Now, let's look at some group data this time. To measure the variability of group data, we encounter a couple of difficulties. The first one's with the range. When we want to find the range, we need to find the maximum value minus the minimum value. Doing group data, we can't see what the maximum and the minimum values are. Those values, those specific scores are hidden inside these groups. Somewhere in this group is the maximum, but we don't know exactly what it is. Same with the minimum, somewhere in here. All we know is that it's in there somewhere. What we do, the group data, is assume that the minimum value is at the bottom of the first group and the maximum value is at the end of the last group. So in this case, that would mean 80 minus 45 equals 35 kilograms. To find the interquartile range, we also have the difficulty of not being able to identify the median. All we know is it's in one of these classes somewhere. We can't find the median. We can't find Q1 or Q3. So it's tough to find the interquartile range from the table. But what we can do is take the data and turn it into an OGIV. Okay, here's an OGIV of this data over on the right. And now we need to use that OGIV to find the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile, which we're going to say are approximately the same as Q3 and Q1. So I find when I create this OGIV that 75% or Q3 is about 68 kilos. And when I look at the 25th percentile, it works out to be about 55 kilos. So my approximation for the interquartile range is 13 kilograms. Now, to find the standard deviation, we need to use actual scores, okay? And in the group data, we don't have actual scores. In order to create actual scores, we're going to use the midpoints of each group. Once we've used the midpoints to create our scores, we've got a list of scores now. Now we can use the standard process for finding the standard deviation as we did earlier, and the variance will be found the same way as well. Okay, to finish off, here's a summary of what we've covered in this lesson, which you can pause and copy down. And thanks very much for watching the video.